Hi friends! Today we are going to make cute little fruits that we can hang from our backpack zippers or make necklaces out of or all sorts of cool stuff. In order to make this craft you'll need a couple of things. You're going to need some felt in an ideal world or just another kind of fabric. You can do this craft with felt or regular fabric. I'll give you instructions for both. You're also going to need a piece of paper. It doesn't have to be very big, um, but it's good for it to be uh, big enough that it can fit your glass on it. It doesn't have to be a glass, just anything with a round bottom. And you're going to need to have a piece of paper that's big enough to fit two of these on. We're also going to need some ribbon. Now it doesn't have to be ribbon. It can also be a shoelace regular string, just about anything you want. We're also going to need some scissors. Now, I have two pairs of scissors here. I have regular scissors and I have fabric scissors. You can use whatever scissors you have. Just be aware that um, regular scissors aren't always as sharp as fabric scissors. So if you only have regular scissors, you'll need to be a little bit more patient when you're cutting your fabric. You're also going to need a needle and some thread. And either a pencil or some chalk. And finally, some pins. You can use straight pins or safety pins. It doesn't matter which. Let's get crafting. Hey friends, I am here to show you how to make um, a felt fruit that you can use to put onto your backpack zipper or coat zipper or just have or use as a bookmark or anything that you want really. So uh, we're gonna start um, by making ourselves a pattern. So what you're gonna do is on the very edge of the paper, so you can see that my glass goes like this on the edge of the paper, we're going to draw a circle using the glass as our guide. Okay. Ta-da! So that is step one. We're going to cut this out and then we are going to do step two. So now that I've got my circle cut out, I'm going to draw around the glass another time. And that's going to make a second circle. Now with this second circle, I have to do something a little bit tricky. I'm going to draw a smaller circle on the inside, being really careful to keep it as close to the same as I can. And then I'm going to turn that circle into some wedges. So now I've got my second smaller circle with the wedges. And what I've done is I've put the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 in each wedge a different number. Now if you want to do six wedges, that's fine, or four wedges, totally cool, whatever works for you. So now that I've, cut the, that I've put these numbers in the wedges, I'm going to cut out the wedges along their lines really simply. Now, I have the numbers so that once I'm done cutting them out, they'll be really easy to put back together in the correct order. And now I'm ready to start tracing my patterns onto fabric. So I'm going to take my big pattern and I've decided that I want to make a yellow fruit, uh, maybe a lemon, maybe an orange, maybe something else, with white in the middle. So I'm going to take my orange, my yellow felt. Now, if you don't have felt at home, you can use any kind of scrap fabric. It's totally fine. Felt just makes them a little fuzzier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pattern and I'm going to put it in the corner so that I don't waste any fabric and I'm going to trace around it. Now you can trace around it with a pencil again 
or if you have some chalk in your house. Chalk is also really good. So I have this nice red chalk that I'm going to use. And when I'm done, I'm going to cut out the circle. Next, I'm going to take my little bit of white fabric. You see, I've taken scraps from my fabric bag. Any scrap of fabric will work as long as it's big enough to fit all of your pieces. And I'm going to put all of my pieces on and I'm going to trace around them one by one and I'm going to cut them. And they're pretty small, so I think my chalk might be a little bit too big. So I'm going to trace them with a pencil. And then when I'm done tracing them, I'm going to cut them out. All right, so you can see that these are different colors than what I had before. It's because I've already gotten this one ready to go. And on this one, I have used, I have some felt, but I've also used some fabric. And so if you want to make this with fabric instead of felt, you just need to know that you need to cut two of your big circle pieces and uh, we're going to sew them together after. But first, what we're going to do is I've taken little pins like this, but you can also use safety pins like this if that's what you've got at home. And I'm going to put all of my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces around in a circle like this. And it looks kind of, I think, like when you cut an orange in half, but it could also look like a flower. It could look like an apple inside, whatever you think it looks like, that is correct. So after I've pinned all of these on, the next step is to sew them. So I have here with me some white thread and a needle, and I'm gonna cut my thread and put it through the needle, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So if you see, the needle has a little hole in it, and we call that the eye of the needle. So I'm gonna turn it so that the eye is facing sideways, and I'm gonna take the point of my thread and hold it really, really close, and I'm gonna put it through the eye. This might take you a couple of tries, but that's totally fine. Just be patient with yourself. So then I'm going to take all... Oh, maybe I cut this string too long. I think I cut this string too long. It's very easy to fix that kind of mistake. So I'm going to take my two ends of the string where they're together. And then what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to put the string facing that way on my finger and then use my thumb to hold it. Then I'm going to wrap the string around my finger so it's wrapped around like this and I'm going to hold it pretty tight and then I'm going to use my thumb to roll it back and forth and back and forth and finally roll it all the way off my finger and pull it down to get a knot. And this is also something that's going to take you a little while to practice. So if you haven't gotten it right away, don't be upset. It took me a long time to learn how to do that. I'm going to suggest that you pause the video right here and try a whole bunch more times until you get it. Then give yourself a high five and then we'll get started sewing. So you can see that I've got all of my pieces pinned on all at once. But really, the best way to do it is to do it one at a time. This can be a little bit tricky because all of the pins are in the middle and it's hard not to hurt yourself. But this way I find is easier to make sure that I'm sewing them in the right place. If you don't want to hurt yourself with the pins, what you can do is after you've pinned them all in place, you can trace around them with your pencil and then take them off and sew them one at a time. It's totally up to you, whatever you like best. The point is that we get sewing. So I'm going to start with my needle coming up from the bottom of the fabric. And the reason that I'm going to do that is because I want this knot, which is kind of ugly, to stay hidden. So I'm going to pull all the way up and then see which side my thread comes up. It's coming up on the top of the fabric. So that's the same side that I'm going to put my needle down 
into the fabric. And I'm making really, oops, really tiny stitches here because I want them to be um, tidy. But if your stitches aren't as tiny as mine, that's okay. So now my needle came out from the bottom of the fabric. So I'm gonna put my needle back in the bottom of the fabric. And if you need to turn your fabric to look at it, that's also totally fine. Whatever works best for you. So I'm gonna keep sewing in and out, up and down, all the way around until I have sewed each of these cute little guys. So it's very important when you only have a little bit of thread left to make a knot before you cut your thread. So I'm going to show you the easiest way to do that. So this stitch right here, you can see it, is the last stitch that I made with this thread. And you'll notice that I'm doing this on not the side that has my nice um, orange bits on it. Um, I'm doing it on the back side so that the knot stays hidden. So I'm going to put my needle under that stitch and I'm going to use it to make a loop. Now, just like tying a knot with a shoelace or a ribbon, I'm going to put my needle through that loop and that's going to make another loop. And then I'm going to put my needle through that other loop and pull to make a knot. So you only have to do one knot, but I'm going to show you one more time. So I put my needle through and that makes a loop. Then I put my needle through the loop and that makes right here another loop. And then I put my needle through that other loop. And this is easier to do if you have um, kind of a long-ish piece of thread. I would say if you want to take out your ruler, probably about Mm, eight or nine or even ten centimeters would be best. So now that I've tied my knot, I can cut my thread and you can see that I've got all of my little bits sewn on. Now, if you have done this in felt, you just have one more step. But if you've done this in fabric that's not felt, you have two more steps. And the reason is because felt along its edges, it doesn't fray. And that means that it doesn't have these little strings inside the fabric that make up the fabric that want to come out. Felt is really good like that. Regular fabric is not so good. And so you need to do something to hide those. So if you've made it with felt, your next step is to make the holder that can you can use to go through your zipper, or to hang from a necklace or whatever you want to make it. So I have here some beautiful ribbon. Now, if you don't have ribbon, don't worry. There are lots and lots of things you can use. You could use just plain string. You could use a strip of fabric that you've cut. You could use a shoelace. Whatever material you want, it's totally up to you. The trick is you want to cut a piece that is, goes from one end of your fruit to the other three times. To measure, I'm gonna go from one end to the other, and then I'm gonna use my finger to hold that end and move it. That's two. Move the end. That's three. And that, and that is where I'm going to so now that you have your ribbon, what you're going to do is you're going to fold it in half, just like this. And then this folded end, you're going to pin and sew onto your um, fruit. And you're going to do it on what I like to call the ugly side. So I'm going to take my pin, 
and I'm going to sew it just like this. Now, if you have a um, fabric for, that you're making instead of felt, you should be doing this step too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew across back and forth like this a whole bunch of times. So I'm going to see if I can get two stitches and go one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, probably about six times. So now that I've got my ribbon hooked in, if you've done it in felt, you are done. You are ready to go and you can use this to tie on to your zipper or whatever else you want to put it on. But if you've been working in fabric, you have one more step to do. And it's this. So you're going to take your other circle of fabric that you've made and you're going to put it so the ugly sides are together. Most fabric has a bright side that's got um, the actual pattern on it and a less bright side. So you're going to take the two less bright sides and stick them together. And I've got a really giant pin here that I'm going to use to pin them together. So I want to make sure that the edges are matched up. You can use two or three or seven pins, however many pins you need. And then I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to sew all the way around, but I'm not going to sew the same way that I did the last one. This time I'm going to start by hiding my knot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift up the edge and I'm going to put my needle through just one piece of fabric on the ugly side or the pale side and then hide my thread and go like that. And so you see now my knot is invisible. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to every single time I put my needle in the fabric, it's going to go in the same side. So my needle went in the back of the fabric. So it's going to go in the back of the fabric again, even though it came out the top, it's going to go in the back of the fabric again. And I'm going to keep doing this all the way around the edge. Um, and sometimes what might happen is you might pull really tight and it might kind of get squished like this. Don't worry about that. All you have to do is gently, gently loosen your thread. You can use your needle to help you do that by just putting it under the loop that your thread makes and pulling a bit. And I'm going to keep going all the way around the outside. So this is a cool project because you're doing two kinds of stitching. Here's what it looks like when it's finished. And uh, yeah, so if you have in fabric, you should have these little stitches all around. And if you did it in felt, you don't need that. Um, and so I'm just going to show you now how I'm going to attach it to my backpack. So I have these nice zippers on the front of my backpack and I'm just going to use the ribbon and put it through the pull of the zipper and then you can tie it in a couple of ways. The way that I'm going to tie it is by putting the two pieces together, wrapping them around to tie a knot like this, but you could also tie a bow or another kind of knot. And now I have a beautiful zipper pull that uh, is prettier and makes my backpack look nice. You can also put it on a coat, put it on a necklace. If you could make it into a necklace with a lot longer ribbon, um, the sky's the limit. Whatever your imagination wants can turn this beautiful tiny fruit into whatever you want it to be.